people would describe me as a figurative narrative painter. It's taken me a long time to sort of succumb to that name, to, to just say, yeah, that's what I am. And in some ways that's refreshing. But because when I was in art school, it was totally uncool to be that. And, uh, and because I come from being trained sort of by abstract expressionists that, that uh, you know, it's better to talk about the picture plane and push and pull and figure ground than, you know, pinkies and eyeballs and gesture. So, but all those things come into play now, pretty much in equal measure. I went to Tyler School of Art in Philadelphia, late 80s, mid 80s. I went to grad school out in Indiana at Bloomington. After that, I moved to Chicago because that was the next big city over there and I didn't want to go back to New York because I knew I wouldn't really be able to paint because it's too hard to live there. So I moved to Chicago and it was really during a great time in Chicago. We moved here just because we knew we could kind of settle into a small city that would still have a lot of the same things that Chicago had. I could get space and raise some kids here. So that was part of it too. And, and I have family here. My mom lives out on the Cape. I was born in Fitchburg, Mass, and my father's family's from there. But when I was one, I moved to New York, to Westchester County, where my mom grew up. My dad had a job in New York City, so we lived there for a long time. My dad was a legal aid lawyer. Poverty law was his passion. He was a big advocate for the, for the poor. So he continued to live in New York City after my parents got divorced, and my mom remarried and we moved to Pennsylvania, Easton, Pennsylvania, near Allentown. So we commuted every weekend into New York City. Probably a big reason that my brothers and I are all in the arts. You know, we, we got to see a lot of music, plays, dance. It was pretty awesome. I think we all had the tendency to want to express ourselves visually. The first experience I had of working from life and drawing something and having it sort of feel like that thing, a, a light bulb went off that, oh, this is a way I could, I could talk. I tend to be somebody who works on one painting at a time that kind of puts all her eggs in one basket. I could be working on a painting for a year and it could just be a total bomb. There was a time when I did not do very much preparation at all. In fact, I'm only recently coming to trying to force myself to do more preparation. And what happens is because I have a lot of other things in my life, motherhood and family, um, my time is limited and I'm lately trying to say, well, wait, that's nice, but if you're only making one painting a year, you're, you're losing all these other paintings that you want to make. So I'm trying to prepare a little bit more and um, not feel like there have to be 10 paintings underneath each painting, but maybe through studies and, and working. So this series, again, you know, is, is nice because I'm forcing myself to do three at once. I think the logic of people working on several things at once is to kind of get a release in another painting and then come back to it. It makes a lot of sense. It just, it's very, I get very monofocused, um, very determined. It's hard for me to leave it alone. Sweet pea got a city boy back. I did not want to paint whales. <laughs> I'm surrendering to the subject. The way that that came about was this sculpture that I saw at the Cleveland Art Museum of Jonah and the whale. And it was just these little feet sticking out of this monster. This is beautiful carved marble. It was exactly the dream that I had had the night before. My son and I had been at the Chagrin River in Cleveland looking at these giant carp. And I dreamt that my son and I saw this man being swallowed by one of these carp. And so I, we hauled him out, my son and I, and cut him open and we got the man out. And then I go to the museum and that's the first thing I see is that sculpture. 
And I'm just like, okay, well that's an interesting thing. You know, then you start researching it, and then you're off to the races, and then suddenly it's just this huge subject that you could work on for years. I can go off with that research and it opens up my mind to its universality, but I, you know, I like to kind of come back to, you know, that image. And then I'm like, oh yeah, and then I moved to Providence. Bedford's right there, you know, and I'm reading Moby Dick. I'm like, okay, so I was just supposed to paint some whales. As an artist, it's my job to make things feel big and so for instance you know you've got a whale how do you get it to feel a certain scale you know so I, I did some studies that are uh, small really small paintings that I think begin to get that feeling but not quite and then you know ideas about how to make this whale feel small so you know a middle painting in this is that journey that travel and then it's about the sea and the sea is is vast and the whale is small, so it gives perspective to the whale. I always have a backlog of smaller ideas um, and, and some bigger ideas. You know, as we get older, I think painting from life is a source of joy for me that I don't give myself very often because it, it doesn't take me as much out of the world that we live in, but I enjoy it a lot. Painting is kind of magical, so, you know, there are moments for me too when I'm painting where I'm like, oh wait, you know, you're, you're painting. It's not sculpting, it's not real. Um, so I, that's, you know, I want people to get sucked into it. I think a lot of painters probably feel like they hope that, that both um, the paint and the subject kind of stay in the, in the front of the viewer's mind at the same time. I think the more that you dig into a certain vein of work, the more you find there. So I, I've, since I've sort of committed to that what I want to do is make big communicative paintings or small communicative paintings and that I don't want to I don't want anybody to feel that if they look at my work that they don't have something to relate to or to see in it. Somehow that's important to me. As long as my eyes and my hands hold out, you know, I'll keep doing it. Are you kidding me? I think in some ways it's really just beginning because I've had, you know, there's been a lot of time doing things for, for people um, that I have to do, just like everybody, right? There may come a time when my children are, are uh, making me lunch and I'm painting, huh? <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs>